Hello everybody, it's John Johnson, Corn Nation. You get another tree video because it's, it's kind of nice out here and I get away from my broom and my studio and I don't feel like I need to edit things and I can talk more freely. It's, you know, plus I have to walk about a mile out here and, uh, and get rid of stress because there seems to be some. In this video, what is this video about? This video is about comments and questions that have come up over the past few days about Nebraska versus Minnesota, although not so much, and certainly Colorado, because between Thursday, everybody freaked out when we lost to Minnesota the way we did, and then Saturday comes along and Colorado looks like, oh my God, they're gonna win the national title, and then everybody even shipped themselves even further. So there are a lot of questions. I'll do a little bit of a Colorado preview, but we will have other shows during the week. Monday night, Todd and I will certainly talk about Colorado. And uh, throughout the week, you know, the Five Hard Podcasts, and I'm sure other things will come up. So stay tuned to the channel. Please subscribe. Click that little bell thing so you get a notification. Um, hey, consider picking up a Corn Nation t-shirt to support us. Or give us super chats or something during our live shows. Anyway, first, first subject... I have my notes. First subject, Colorado beat number 17 TCU. Well, and, oh yeah, and the team that was in the national title game last year, as if this means much, because TCU was a shell of itself. Uh, they were ranked number 17, and normally when you have a team that's been in the national title game last year, you're going to rank them in the top five, because they're normally going to return most of their team and be good again. And TCU did not hardly return anybody. They lost so much of their team. Uh, they shouldn't probably have been ranked, but they were ranked 17 because you still give them that, you know, that grace when you're doing rankings. Because I've done rankings. Uh, most of the team was gone. And I mean, really, you know, TCU, I, let's face it, they didn't have a defense. Their offense spent the first half trying to figure out what they were doing. Uh, but, you know, that they beat number 17, you know, good for Colorado. It was uh, like their first road win over ranked opponents since like 2000. It's been 20 years. So, you know, good for them. I'm not taking anything away from them, although I'll probably insult them once or twice during this sobriquet. Is that the right word? I don't know. Move on. Then um, there was people that said that the timeline to success is altered. I, they did. We don't have to wait three to four years for success. You can just rebuild the team in a year through the transfer portal. Really? Name me a team who's rebuilt their team. Name me a single team who's rebuilt their school uh, from nothing out of the transfer portal. They, there isn't one. And that's because you really can't do it. Uh, there's not the offensive and defensive linemen that people need in the transfer portal. They're just not magical people out of there. Uh, the timeline hasn't been altered I mean, you could say Colorado did that. It, it's been one game, but they only won one game last year, and they were pretty terrible, and now they've won one game over a ranked opponent. So if that's, the, if that's the example you want to use, well, I guess you're correct in that way. But does that mean they're going to have long-term success? We don't know that. And quite frankly, I find it hard to believe. Although, well, we'll get to more in the Colorado preview. Got the ants on me. Compare this to uh, a team. Did you watch Florida State just slaughter LSU last night? Yeah, Mike Norville. Let's see, he was 2020 was his first year, I think. COVID year, he was three and six. 2021, he was five and seven. Last year, he was 10 and three. And last night, Florida State beat the living crap out of LSU. And LSU was ranked fifth. You know, that's a program builder. That's a guy who's going to build a program. And probably Florida State is now going to stay up there for uh, quite some time compared to that to, let's say, a Deion Sanders, who is, uh, let's face it, a lot of you don't like P.J. Fleck because you say, well, he's full of himself and it's all about him. Well, what do you think Deion Sanders is, for God's sake? Do you really think he's there for Colorado's long-term success? Do you really think he's pro building a program or he's building a flash in the pan and using his son as the quarterback? And as soon as he gets a better offer, he's gone in a heartbeat. Or his son goes to the NFL. That's what's going on in Colorado. We know that. I don't think there's any big surprise about that. Coloradans love it because they've been horrible for so long. 
And let's face it, most Coloradans are about themselves anyway, so they relate better to the guy than we do. We being Nebraska, you know, because we're all in this together. Remember that thing? Okay. Uh, quick CU preview, Colorado preview. You know, they did beat everybody's expectations. And I'll be completely honest. I figured they would be a joke of a team, but they came out and uh, they, they off, the offense looked very dynamic against the team that didn't bother playing defense. Uh, they, the Shadur Sanders uh, set a school record in his first outing as a quarterback, and that that's impressive. I mean, you think about all the years that Colorado's played football. Uh, Shadur Sanders, he looked very good. He looked better than Nebraska's quarterback Jeff Sims, and I, you know, although after one game that didn't take much because of the interceptions. You know, they have good receivers and they have a good running back. They didn't have much of a running game, Colorado. Uh, they don't appear to have much of an offensive line. TCU really didn't challenge them much on, on offense or on defense. Uh, in fact, TCU looked like they didn't really even know what they were doing. And I think TCU's coach, who is it, Sonny Crumby, Crumbo, Colombo, Sonny Dykes. I knew a kid that played for him at SMU. For God's sakes, you think I'd remember this. Uh, he said in a post-game interview, apparently, that he they were not in, in any way prepared for the Shadur Sanders to Travis Hunter connection. And Travis Hunter in that game showed that he was a beast. He played two ways, played over 100 snaps. And I want you to think about this. He's an excellent receiver, and he saved their game as a defensive back. Now, I want you to think about this. Is he playing two ways because he's that good or because they don't have any depth? And I'm not going to answer that just because they don't really have any depth, and he is that good. Could be both. <laughs> but I don't think you can spend the season doing that. And we'll see, uh, you know, how he does against Nebraska's defense. Uh, Colorado's defense, it, not very good. And this leads me to think of Colorado as, this has a real Bobby Petrino vibe to it for me. You know, take Deion Sanders' flashy personality, him constantly, blah, 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 blah. We come and I've kept the receipts. You know, you take that part out of it, and it's Bobby Petrino. And if you know who Bobby Petrino is, he was a, well, he was a coach that had a motorcycle accident. Turns out he was having an affair. I'm not talking about that Bobby Petrino. I'm talking about the Bobby Petrino who always recruited really good offensive players. He had some flashy players. He won some games. He didn't really win anything of substance. He never had any longevity. And that's because he just didn't care at all about defense. And I think that's, that's what I see in Colorado right now. I guess I didn't make notes on Nebraska, what we need to do to beat these guys. Well, what we need to do is run the ball. I don't know if you've seen it, but the new clock rules are making it so that teams have very limited possessions per half. And one of the ways you keep Colorado from beating the snot out is you keep their offense off the field. So it's going to be run the ball, and I think we should be able to run the ball against uh, Colorado's defense. Uh, I mean, we're going to have to complete some passes here and there. You know, Thomas Fedoni hasn't shown up yet. Maybe he'll be big in this game. It'll be fun. Uh, run the ball, possess the ball, execute. Don't turn the ball over. These are all very simple things. I think Nebraska's defense is miles ahead of TCU. I, I shouldn't even have to say that. But, uh, I, you know, I've seen a lot of people say that Nebraska's going to get blown out and now that Nebraska's going to get destroyed. Uh, yeah, well, I guess we're going to find out, aren't we, one way or another. The other thing is, I'll say this. There seems to be a number of you who are still upset about Matt Rule being our coach. You wanted Urban Meyer, or you wanted Deion Sanders. And, you know, here's my impression of you. That's you. Is that insulting? Yeah, it's intended to be. Matt Rule is Nebraska's coach. He's probably going to be our coach for the next three years, minimum. Unless, you know, the world ends or something horrible happens. So... The thing about you guys, that, that, that's it. That's what you're doing. You know, you come into the game threads of coordination, you shit all over the place because you're negative and you didn't get your way. And you do the same thing on my YouTube channel with your comments. I don't have a problem with you having that opinion. What I have a problem with is you crap all over everything at a time when this is already difficult for Husker fans. 
to stay positive or to be have this have any joy to it whatsoever because there were positives in the first game. I already did a video about that. Um, and I'll be blunt. I, if all you're going to do is come onto the YouTube channel with comments and crap all over everything or in the coordination game threads, I'm going to ban you because, well, fuck you. I, you know, I got no time for that stuff. I get it. You want to have that opinion? Great. Go piss on somebody else's parade. There you go. And lastly, I'll say this. This whole week is going to be insane with the Deion Sanders thing. And you know they're going to promote this because, uh, you know, they need to make money. They spent all this money on the Big Ten. They need to make it back. They're plugging the games full of commercials. The games haven't been shorter except for the football. They just added more commercials. So good for the TV people. I'll probably have TV cops show up in my house and give me the what's for for complaining about that. But this, is a, this week, I want to ask you, are you excited or are you afraid? Because this is a great opportunity for Nebraska to show where they are as a program. And I, I think you know, if you're a competitive type and the type that likes challenges and the type that's like, yeah, bring it on, you sons of bitches, then you're excited. And if you're afraid, honestly, I was going to do this video from under my bed because to make fun of you people, because I figure that's where you're living this week is under your bed. You know, there's that Star Trek Q line. Go back and hide under your bed. Huh? I, was, I forgot to write that down. You know, if you're really afraid of this, you know, I can't help you. Is Nebraska going to win? I, I don't know. they got a good chance of it. Every game is winnable except for maybe Michigan. Uh, is Nebraska going to get blown out? I highly doubt it because our defense is much better, and like I said, we can limit possessions. Can Nebraska get to a bowl game? I don't know if you watched other games this weekend, but Toledo almost beat Illinois. Illinois had to get a last-second field goal to win the game. Uh, Purdue got beat by Fresno State. I mean, the Big Ten West didn't look like really big juggernauts. Uh, Iowa scored 24 points, one point under uh, Brian Ferentz's keep his job minimum. And it's only we're only one game into the season, and there's a lot of stuff ahead. I am excited to play Colorado. I want to see what Nebraska can do. Is it going to be interesting? You're damn right it's going to be interesting. I am not going to spend the week under my bed, and God knows what's under there, which is why I didn't do a video under my bed. Probably catch some disease. Give it to the world. Another pandemic. <laughs> okay, that's the video. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for supporting us at the Corn Nation. And, uh, you know, consider picking up a Corn Nation t-shirt. Like I said, I hope you all have a good week. And I guess I do have one, just one more question for people that are going to be afraid of this game coming up. And it's very serious. What's it like living your life in fear? Go Big Red.